Bill, your latest book, The United States of Trump, uh, insight into the man who became president. A lot of people said he couldn't. What gave you the indication that this is a guy that could get this job and perhaps even keep it? Well, I was a doubter at first. I mean, he I was sitting with him, Governor, about, I don't know, six years ago in Madison Square Garden watching the Knicks lose another one. And, you know, his attention span is about <laughs> 60 seconds. So he's uh, wandering off and he says to me, you know, I'm thinking about running for president. And I go, of what country? I thought he was, I thought it was a joke. <laughs> um, and I never really I never really locked in on that he had, I knew that he had flirted with it in the early 1990s with Jesse Ventura in a really bizarre uh, come together that I write about in the United States of Trump. But Donald Trump has a gift. And that gift is that he understands what working people are thinking. It's amazing because he's about as far away from a working person as you can get. He's got this instinct, Trump does, um, that he can basically feel emotionally where things are going and and he gets ahead of it. So I have the four pillars of his belief system that got him elected. Let's go through what are those four primary things that you were able to distill about Donald Trump? Number one is the economy and how to make money. So he believes that he can transfer the how to make money to the masses of working people. Number two is immigration, that it must be legal and you've got to stop the chaos at the border and all these people coming here that the federal government have no idea who they are. Number three is Islam. Donald Trump does not respect the religion because it did not rise up en masse after 9-11. Number four, he thinks that the politicians before him Obama, Bush the Younger, Clinton, all sold the country out in trade deals and other deals, treaties. He thinks they all sold America out, that we always get the uh, bad end of the stick. And those four things he was able to convince people that he would improve. So why does he think differently? Uh, and why is he right most of the time? I think that he sees everything is a transaction. There, there have been two presidents that have really governed in a transactional way. Franklin Delano Roosevelt and Donald Trump. And so he sees every issue as a transaction and that he, Donald Trump, is talented enough as a negotiator to get the better part of the transaction for the country. So that eliminates the pinheads. And that's why the Washington <laughs> establishment hates him. He basically said, I can make the best deals in every area. And then when he gets criticized for it, he doesn't understand. He doesn't, he doesn't get it. And, and that's where the tension lies between him and the media, because the media is never gonna give him credit for anything because they loathe him so much. Well, let's talk about that a minute. Uh, there's no doubt that there's no love whatsoever from the media toward President Trump. Does that ultimately help him with a lot of the masses of people who also distrust the media when it comes to uh, looking toward this next election? I mean, six corporations control 90 percent of the news flow to the American people. And all of those corporations have an agenda beside making money. So Donald Trump is savvy in the sense that he can, again, pick up the instinct that a lot of Americans despise the media, and well, they should. The media is not telling the truth in many, many circumstances. But on the other hand, he gets caught up in it, and it distracts him. The last chapter of the United States of Trump, I interviewed the president right after the Mueller report came out. It's the first time in the 30 years that I've known the man that he showed emotion to me. Now, he wasn't crying or any of that, but I felt it. And the emotion was relief. So the media, he, he is using it to his advantage, but it's taking an emotional toll on him, in my opinion. I want to just 
turn quickly. What do you see happening in terms of the impeachment process? Will it ultimately benefit Donald Trump rather than hurt him? If you step back away from the partisanship and the hatred that has enveloped our nation, and I say that sadly, Governor, and I know you feel the same way I do. I am I do. beside myself with sadness over the hatred that we are experiencing. We shouldn't. Donald Trump is not an evil man. He's not governing in an irresponsible way. That's the truth. But what you have now is a nakedly partisan attempt to remove him from office because the Democratic Party knows it has no superstar. There's no Bill Clinton. There's no Barack Obama. None of their presidential candidates have captured the imagination of the American electorate. None of them. So Donald Trump has a good chance to win re-election unless they can destroy him before the vote, which is what this impeachment thing is all about. I believe most Americans understand that, even though they're not getting the truth about impeachment. I wrote a column today about this is really why Donald Trump made that phone call to Ukraine. There was a reason he did it. All right. And it wasn't just to destroy Biden or get dirt on Biden. The much bigger picture. So the American public know when the fix is in, Governor, and that's what we're seeing. And there is a good chance, as you saw Nancy Pelosi and Willie Brown, of all people, right? We better watch it, we the Democratic Party. Bill O'Reilly, always a pleasure. I hope people will enjoy the book, The United States of Trump. And I think President Trump is just glad that you didn't call it killing Donald Trump. <laughs> Thanks for having me in, Governor. The United States of Trump is available wherever books are sold. Be sure to pick up a copy. It really takes you behind the scenes and helps you understand what makes our president tick. And be sure to visit Bill O'Reilly's website for his powerful news analysis and the no-spin commentary for which he is famous. It's all available anytime at BillOReilly.com.